Hello ladies and gentlemen. So now I want us to do this problem here. I want us to solve this quadratic equation by completing the square. Okay. So the first thing I want to do is I want to take this first example to remind you of the basic idea of the technique. Okay. I want us to imagine for a moment that I have the term x plus a and I squared it for some a. Okay. A is some number that we don't know, okay? And if I were to calculate this out, I would get, okay, what does it mean, x plus a squared? It means x plus a times x plus a. We know how to calculate this. x times x gives me x squared. x times a gives me plus ax. a times x is plus ax. And then a times a is plus a squared. Now, if you notice, these two terms are like terms. So if I have, so I have x squared, right? Plus ax plus ax is the same thing as plus 2ax, okay? And then plus a squared, okay? So in other words, what we can say is that this expression is equal to this expression, okay? And so algebraically, we can replace this expression with this expression and vice versa, wherever. So let me summarize this by saying that this is equal to x squared plus 2ax plus a squared, okay? And we're going to, uh, in, in the future videos on the completing the square, you're going to see that I'm just going to write this down. But I want you to know that you don't have to memorize it. You can just calculate it explicitly whenever you need it. And now what we're going to do is we're going to, and now I know what your question is. You're asking me, okay, David, that's great and all. Um, but how does that help us with this particular problem? Or how are we going to apply it to this particular problem to get us to a situation that can help us to solve this equation? And the basic technique is as follows. Or let me remind you of the basic thing. So basically, what I want to do is I want to ask the following question. I want to find out if I can match this part. I'm forgetting about the plus 5 equals 0 for the beginning, for the moment, OK? I'm just worried about the x squared minus 4x for the moment. Then I go over here to my formula, and I ask myself, I want to match that part with that part. So I ask myself, what does a have to be in order that x squared plus 2ax equals x squared minus 4x? Let's repeat that question again. What does a have to be for x squared plus 2 times ax to equal x squared minus 4x. So you might say, aha, David, it must be negative 2. Because I, if I do 2 times negative 2, I get negative 4. And in that case, I would have x squared plus negative 4x. Or in other words, what's a plus minus? That would be just a minus. So it would be x squared minus 4x, right? And you would be right. So we can say that it is a equals to negative 2, OK? Now let's suppose that it didn't come that easily, or as might always be the case in some of these quadratics, let's say the number was not easy for us to think about. So what I would have done is I would have said, okay, I want to force this 2a to equal negative 4, so I just set it equal. So I can just solve it like any other equation. I just say, okay, I want a such that 2a equals negative 4. I divide by 2, both sides, to get the a by itself. I get a equals 2. Negative 4 divided by 2, negative 2. I get the a equals negative 2 in any case. Okay? But so now, so now we're in a position to use this knowledge of what a has to be in order to make some uh, setup with this equation. So watch this. So I'm now going to replace a in this equation with negative 2. So x plus negative 2 is x minus 2 squared is equal to x squared plus 2 times negative 2 x plus negative 2 squared. Okay, that came out. So then I asked my, and as we, as we saw by design, we know that the plus 2 times negative 2x will become uh, 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. So it'll become plus negative 4x. Or what is that? Minus 4x. 
So here it'll be x squared minus 4x. And then what's negative 2 squared? It's negative 2 times negative 2, which is positive 4. So then it's going to be plus 4. So plus 4. Now I want you to notice what we have here. I have, in, in this expression that I got at the bottom, using this identity, I have this piece here, which exactly matches this piece that I wanted to match. And so now, what can I do? Well, this is an equation, and it says that this left-hand side is equal to that right-hand side, right? So what I can do is I can subtract the 4 from the right, just like any other equation, and I can subtract the 4 from the right here. And what this allows me to do is it allows me to write this expression on the left, x minus 2 squared minus 4 equals the x squared minus 4x. Okay? And this is where we get all the advantage. And this is what we were looking for. Because what I'm about to do is I'm going to take this expression, which is here in the equation, and I'm going to replace it with this expression here. Okay? So let's do that here. So that means that I can write this as, I'm going to put a bracket here to represent what this is. And we can see that that's going to be x minus 2 squared minus 4. That's this piece, right? You see? What's x squared minus 4x? It's x minus 2 in parentheses squared minus 4. Then I bring the plus 5 down here, and then I bring my equal 0. So now I have this equation. So what I've done with, so the completing the square basically allows me to replace this term that has this square and this linear term and replace it just with one square term. And you're going to see that that's going to be um, crucial to allowing us to solve this for x. So now if you notice here, I can just remove these parentheses, okay? And I can rewrite this as x minus 2 squared minus 4 plus 5 equals 0. By these parentheses, I meant this square bracket, okay? Now I can combine these like terms. Negative 4 plus 5, that's positive 1. So this equation then becomes x minus 2 squared plus 1 equals 0. I can now subtract the 1 to the other side because I want to get this square term by itself. And I get x minus 2 squared equals negative 1. Okay. Now, I've got the square term by itself. What is the opposite of squaring? The opposite of squaring is taking the square root. So I have x minus 2 is equal to plus minus the square root of negative 1. So now, in this discussion, I want to bring up two topics before we proceed further. The first topic is the idea of what is the square root of negative 1, and the fact that we have a special name for it, and, uh, and so I want to address that immediately. So I is equal to the square root of negative 1. This is the definition of i. And I want you to know this fact, but I also want you to know the fact that i squared is equal to negative 1. Okay? These are two facts. And this is called um, this is called the imaginary number i. Okay? That's the one thing I want to talk about here. Because that's going to allow us to write this right-hand side as plus minus i. The second topic I want to bring up as we look at this, which you may be wondering is, David, tell me about or remind me why you put the plus minus when you took the square root. And I want you to think of this example. If I take x squared equal to 4, for example, and I want to find out what values of x make this true, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the opposite of squaring so I can get the x by itself. So I'm going to square root the left-hand side, and I'm going to square root the right-hand side. So when I square root both sides, I'm going to get x equals plus minus the square root of 4, which will be plus minus 2. 
Now you might ask me, okay, David, uh, so here you know that the square root of 4 is 2. Why? Because 2 times 2 is 4. The reason why I'm putting the plus minus is that I'm claiming that if I take x equals 2, that that makes this equation true. Let's see if that's true. 2 squared means 2 times 2. And what is 2 times 2? That's 4. So it's true for x equals positive 2. But what I'm also claiming is that x equals 2 negative 2 makes this equation true. Let's see if that's true. If I take negative 2 as my x, then I'm, then I'm saying, then I'm going to evaluate the left-hand side. What is negative 2 squared? Negative 2 squared means negative 2 times negative 2. We know that a negative 2 times a negative 2, or well, we know that a negative times a negative is a positive, and we know that 2 times 2 is 4. So if I have negative 2 squared, which is negative 2 times negative 2, that's going to be positive 4. So it will also make this equation true. So we can see that both of these values, plus 2 and minus 2, solve this uh, equation. And so therefore, whenever you're taking the square root to isolate the x, you should always affix the positive, the plus minus. Now, it is also true, and I want to tell you about this now, that it might be the case that in the particular problem you're working, the negative value or the positive value, depending on the situation, may not have a real meaning in the context of a problem. But from a mathematical perspective, you can see that both of those values made this equation true. And likewise here, when I take the square root to isolate the inside of this square term, I affix a plus minus to indicate that both the positive square root and the negative square root uh, will be solutions to this equation. So now, finally, what I'm going to do to isolate my x is going to be I'm going to add this 2 to counteract the minus 2 there. And if I do that to the left, I do that to the right, plus 2. So now I'm going to continue this calculation right here. So what does that tell me? That tells me that x is equal to 2 plus or minus i. OK? Now, this is a shorthand um, that allows us to write the two roots in one um, line, but this, but it's a shorthand for the following facts. It's the fact that x equals to 2 plus i is a solution to this quadratic, as well as the fact that x equals to 2 minus i is a solution of this quadratic. So in other words, this expression and these two expressions represent the same fact that the values x equals 2 plus i and x equals 2 minus i are solutions of this quadratic. Okay? And so I hope that you've enjoyed this example, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you so much.